Okay, recording live, recording, uh, acquiring streams, crossing the streams, total protonic reversal in three, two, one. We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing how you took that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else. Have yeah, something to absolutely, true for you. because I can't something think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to O'Reilly Radio. This is show 151, recorded Friday, April 14th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really? I have with me my usual suspects. I've got Stephen Griffith, I've got Amber Besucker, and I've got Daniel Atherton. Whew. It's good to be here. It has, it's been a bit of a challenge getting uh, all the hardware to play nice. Um, now that some, you get new hardware. Some of it still isn't playing nice, but you know we'll just uh, we will soldier on because there are things that we must talk about. The world does not sleep, even though boy would we like a nap. So, just like twenty minutes, man. Give us some, give us a yeah, small break. Just twenty minutes. Come on, I just need a little power nap. Just just like a, a coffee nap. Can I just have a cup of coffee and, and shut my eyes for a little bit, please? Can we do that? The, the nurse coffee nap? It'd be great. But anyway... Um, or, or, you know, 16-ounce Cuban coffee. There we go. Just I really don't want to feel my heart. Just <laughs> become one with the speed force and be able to scream Spanish. Nice, <laughs> nice. There, there was an episode of Futurama where uh, Fry, his goal was to drink 100 cups of coffee. 300. Something. Was it 300? It was 300 cups of coffee. Well, there you go. Okay. Hey, Mama Van, welcome to the chat room. Glad hey, to see you. To see and of course, yes, our, our chat room is working. So congratulations on proving that to us. We were, we were a little concerned. So at least that's there. So welcome back. Um, we do make mistakes, though. So please call us on it. Let us know about those, those things. Go ahead and send us an email at Podcast at gmail.com or phone it in at 470-222-6759. And if you're a solicitor, don't bother calling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or if you're a bill collector, don't bother calling. You shouldn't have this number. I told you never to call me here. So, <clears throat> and also I would like to thank our $5 patrons. We've got Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, and Daniel Duncan. Uh, Daniel Duncan actually might uh, ping me here and actually wish to uh, join. That would be nice. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that. Um, but he is a... Uh, uh, it's Country Fried Free Thought is the um, the podcast that he's a part of, and he is going to be joining me and Fred Sims, uh, you know, our, one of our other co-hosts and provocateurs here at uh, O'Reilly Radio, at ReasonCon coming up. Oh, the end of next week. So, by the way, no, there's not going to be a show, not a live show next week because we'll be at ReasonCon. So all of my hardware will be dark. There's not going to be anybody to run it. Because I'll be watching uh, the guys at God Awful Movies, uh, you know, do a live show. There's going to be Shelley Seagal there uh, doing a live concert. And I think I'm going to get to hopnob with uh, people like Lawrence Krauss and, uh, and stuff like that. So it's going uh, to be a really great time. And that's in Hickory, North Carolina. This is the third Reason Gun, Reason Con 3. So I really hope that you can join us for Reason Con 4 because I will be there. Oh, yes. We will be there. In fact, I've even made, um, I've made buttons. Little buttons. So you can get commemorative buttons for Reason Con. For all the commemorating. That's right. Yes. And they're, they're going to be specific for Reason Con 3. So that way I'll obviously have to make new ones for Reason Con 4. But hey, you know. That way, you know that you, you got to collect the whole set, so you got to go. Limited edition. That's right. You got to go. You got to find us, and then there you go. So that's how it is. All righty. Um, let's see. Um, oh, I had completely forgotten that when I was setting up the uh, the Patreon page, that one of the goal levels that I wanted to do for our five dollar patrons was to open up the show notes so they could see how the uh, sausage is made. 
on occasion, or go back and, and actually peruse all of them. So um, I, I fixed that now. <laughs> so all of our patrons, you can go back and you can look through the, uh, through the show notes and kind of see how they're generated. They are generated rather quickly right before the show because, well, we have lives. Uh, but, you know, you could always email us with a, sh- with a topic idea and we'll pop it in. Because as a, you're contributing to the show monetarily, you've got some say in how this goes. Okay? Got a little bit of say. Because technically, you're our bosses. You know, we work for who we get paid by. So there you go. You know, you're the lobbyists for us, us congressmen here. <laughs> us congress we're, critters. We're, we're begging you to bribe us, please. Yes, we can be bought. <laughs> So go over to p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash O'Reilly Radio and you too can bribe us to uh, to do your bidding. Dance, monkey dance. will only make the show better. Yes, please. Because obviously um, I've had to buy some hardware. So that was, yeah, please. In fact, I still have to buy more hardware to make other better things happen because some things just aren't working out so hot. Uh, by the way, I would like to, uh, you know, just as a as an anti-pick, the Avermedia uh, Capture Box GC550. It's a USB HDMI uh, Capture Box, you know, for, you know, you know, it's supposed to be like Xbox and PlayStation streaming and things like that. This is garbage. <laughs> this is absolute garbage. And you should just uh, ignore that. You should not, not ever, don't bother. Just go to something else. It's not good. Bad. Bad. Okay, so moving right along, we've got uh, we got some things up in here for the, uh, the potpourri segment in uh, in side A of O'Reilly Radio. Trump gives states okay to defund Planned Parenthood. Again, apparently, we are continuing the war on women. <sighs> Notice that this one didn't have a press conference. Uh, did it come out today on Garbage Day? Uh, it came no. out on Thursday. Oh, that's surprising. But also, look at what happened. He's essentially outsourcing the defunding rather than I'm doing it myself. It's more, I'm just going to say that you guys can. Mm. I'm going to walk over here now. But this wasn't a photo op for him. And almost everything's a photo op for him. Apparently, there were a bunch of uh, men surrounding him as he did sign it, however. Of course. So that's a, that's a giant shock, right? Uh, so President Donald Trump signed a resolution on Thursday that will allow states to withhold Title X family planning funds from Planned Parenthood and other abortion providers. The resolution overturns a Health and Human Services rule enacted by the Obama administration last year that prevents states from defunding Planned Parenthood or other health providers for any reason other than the provider's lack of ability to deliver services to program beneficiaries in an effective manner. And this is the same resolution that passed at the end of, at the end of March that uh, Mike Pence had to be the tiebreaker on. Right, yes. But, Andy, I mean, this shouldn't really be a problem. I mean, obviously, women don't know how to take care of themselves. They, they need us to tell them exactly what to do at all times of the day. I can't believe I actually was able to say that with a straight face. I've impressed myself sometimes. Acting. Right. I mean, this... Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. y- you know, uh, there's going to be a lot of women admitted to emergency rooms with perforated cervixes and uteri and I would I would like to um who have poisoned themselves and yeah because I mean uh, abortions have been around almost as long as pregnancies yes so they had them in ancient Egypt yeah and the old apothecaries knew what they were doing yeah it sucked for 3 days but hey it was typically safe I'm actually been tempted as all these things come down to literally research the old ways of doing it and selling special teas to women. Um, you could. Yeah, you could. I, in fact, hey, I, it, I probably you know, know a no, guy. So no, you know what I'll do? I'll call it a supplement. Oh yeah. It's completely unregulated and don't worry because under the Trump administration, it never will be. 
Yep. Well, I mean, one of the one of the least dangerous ways, but it's also one of the least effective ways. You, it's really, you know, hit or miss is uh, essentially ODing on vitamin C. Really? Yeah. Yep. Well, you, you end up you turn slightly orange, and you pee a lot of uh, bright colors. Yes. Um. That's awkward bruise easily. Hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't always work, but that's one of the least harmful ways to uh, yeah. induce a miscarriage. And you could also always uh, cover by saying that, well, I was feeling a little sick, so I was just taking a lot of vitamin C to make sure that I didn't get sick. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just... This, we're going like real Handmaid's Tale real quick, yeah. is what we're doing. Um, uh, now, that there was... My, my suggestion is, is the, don't worry, ladies, there's better things you can do than the age-old story of the coat hanger. Do your research. You can yeah, find um, it. Just be safe. For the love of gods, be just safe. Just don't go poking things up there. Just don't do no. that. No. Don't, don't do well, that. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, is that there is no real honest to God, effective and safe method that would be available to them anymore. I mean, they can do things like drink a shit ton of caro syrup. They can do things that are going to induce uterine contractions that will basically make them go into premature labor. There are things that they can take, but they all are essentially poisonous to the human body. Um, in, in the certain dose that they'd be having to do. Yeah. Yes. Because it is the dose that makes the poison. That is what we've learned through medical science. Correct. Um, and I mean, it's... No, I, I, I don't want to go too far astray into, uh, you know, what we can tell people about, here's how to go perform some back alley abortion. Yeah, no, I, like, I, certainly not. And we shouldn't should do that. not take any of this as medical advice in any way, shape, or form. No, no. Um, we, we are podcasters for the love of God. I mean, please, this is, this is not... These are things that I have heard of women doing and, and things that have popped up in news stories about how women went about this. I'm not suggesting that they be done. Yeah. Daniel, you have, so, you have a mind here. You, you, what, what's on your mind there? Essentially, going back before this, states that defund are essentially saying, we don't care about women. We don't care about your lives. You can either leave our state or your marriage is going to go to term or you're going to invoke self-harm. And these states will be fine with that. It's also a way to keep people in poverty. Mm-hmm. Because the more kids you have, especially if you were in a disenfranchised position to begin with, the less likely it is that you will ever crawl out of that hole. I, I don't want to go all Machiavellian, because though I, I don't think that is the intention, I think it is a welcome side effect. You know, it, that, that's kind of the, the I would say it's a partial intention. There's definitely hmm. more reasons to it than that that take center stage. I, I think all of this is the religious right. All of this. I, I don't think Most all of it is. It. I think with what we've been seeing this past... Well, hang on. Hold on one sec. I want to um, I, I want to get a couple female voices in, you know, for this. Okay. So we have Senator Joni Ernst, Republican out of Iowa, and Representative Diane Black, Republican out of Tennessee. They are the sponsors of this bill. Mm-hmm. Taxpayers should not be forced to subsidize the abortion industry in this country. Said the, said the sponsors of the House and Senate resolutions. They wrote in a joint op-ed for the Washington Examiner. Nor should they be forced to foot the bill for an organization like Planned Parenthood that has displayed such blatant disregard for human life. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things going on there. The first is, you mentioned there's a religiosity to it. Um, that's part of it. The other part of it is the toxic... Um, you know, uh, mindset that kind of uh, permeates conservatism where it's the whole bootstrap thing where whatever you do, it's your fault. 
Um, you're responsible for literally everything that happens in your life. It couldn't possibly be other outside circumstances or this capitalist system that is meant to fuck you over. Um, you know, if you get sick, that's your problem. You deal with it. You pay the money. Oh, you don't have the money? Well, die. Um, and how dare you make anyone else pay for you? Um, and then the other thing is, in ter- for them particularly, it's the internalized misogyny, which uh, stems a lot of the times from religion and also from conservatism. So there's a lot going on there. There is a lot going on there. Mama Van says, we have already seen that poverty and poor education create a population that's easier to control. And yes, that's exactly what I was getting at. And what I was going to say with what we've seen this past two weeks, especially with Bannon and his populace being pushed aside, Mm -hmm. is a rise of corporatism within the White House. Oh, well, Um, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's big business. It's not, it's not business as usual. It's not politics as usual. It's big Actually, business. Fun, fun thing, going th- as people are going through Trump's previous tweets, yeah. almost everything he accused Hillary of being for or doing as on the campaign trail, he has done within the past two weeks. Mm-hmm. And things that he was highly critical of uh, Barack Obama as well. In the last two weeks. In the last two weeks, yeah. yeah. He has become yeah, those people. The last two weeks. Yeah. No, he's been on the road to it the whole time. But, yeah, it's um, remarkable. Remarkable. As one person put it, it is though a genie cursed him to predict all of his misdeeds <laughs> in the future. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really great. That's a good trope. Hmm. Amber, you should write something about that. Like a like a, kind of a Cassandra complex, only internalized. Yeah, everything yeah. that you complain about will come true, but you will be the culprit. Mm-hmm. Got it. And you will be completely cursed to not even understand it, but everyone else will see it and mock you for it. Um, but one <laughs> one of the reasons that I I don't attribute this particularly to only the religious right is because you know Christianity is one of many fertility cults, um, and the thing is is that Planned Parenthood they know they know provides services for pregnant women. They mm-hmm. they help them find low cost providers. Um, they help them confirm their pregnancy so that they can get on Medicaid so they can have the babies. They know all this. So I don't think they do. No, they do. They absolutely do. You I can sp- bring it up to any one of them and they know. I spoke with, um, you know, because this is a talking point of conservatives. And my dad, who is not necessarily an arch conservative, but he definitely has leanings. Uh, arch I, I asked him. I, I thought there's a hat involved. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't he have the hat. At the top of a tower. He doesn't Brand have the hat. Conservative. So he's not there Imperial yet. Imperial conservative. Yeah, he's not there yet. He doesn't have the hat. He's not the Grand Poobah or anything like that. There's no horns. Are there you know. arches involved? There may be arches involved, but, you know. Anyway, uh, he, I asked him about Planned Parenthood and what he thought, how much of their services were abortion-oriented. Well, I'll give you the fact that a lot of them couldn't tell you the percentage, but well, most of them know they that also, these he had other no, services... He had no idea the other things they did. None. He thought it was almost all abortions. Most of them do. Yeah. And most of them, even if you show them, like, like the ones who don't know, even if you show them, they still oppose it. And it's not just for religious reasons at that point. It's mm-hmm. also because of the, the mentality of, well... You had sex. You had to be ready for that outcome. You know, if you didn't want this to happen to you, you shouldn't have slept with anybody. So now it's your job to take care of yourself. And I don't want you on Medicaid because I don't want to have to pay for it out of my paycheck because they don't know how much of what they come out of their paycheck is actually Medicaid, honestly, even though it says it on the goddamn stub. Um, So, like, while a lot of it, it comes out of the religious right, it's not all of it 
there's also like kind of the backup reason of a lot well of, also it's your personal responsibility but a lot of that personal responsibility is moral shaming that comes from the religion if you're not having sex or procreation why are you having sex well we we also have and randians yes out the conservative right uh yeah they, they look to her books and and her her philosophy Almost as a ruling. Which they shouldn't. Uh, no, they definitely shouldn't. I, I would just, I would like to uh, apologize to the audience for uh, uh, Daniel's audio. He is coming through. He's soldiered on. And he is coming through on Skype on his phone. <laughs> and yes, though I, the video I, I, is very clear, <laughs> the audio is a little a little can-like. So, um, Right now, I am trying to appease my machine spirit on my computer. Um... <laughs> The, the, the right of updation is at 86 percent. Excellent. As we speak. Excellent. Thank you, Microsoft, for shoving Windows 10 down our throats and forcing us to upgrade even when we really don't need to. So there, there you have it. Um, Mama Van in the chat room uh, carries on with uh, with the thought. Uh, the politicians, uh, whoop, and then then it moved down. Okay, the politicians know it, but the populace that listen to them don't have a clue about what else Planned Parenthood does. It is the religious right that is spreading the misconceptions, uh, no pun intended. Nice mom fan. Mm, misconceptions. Clever, clever audience. <laughs> we have smart people listening, and I like that. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, just a, a lot of the the reasoning behind what is forcing the Planned Parenthood to be flushed is... Um, it can all be attributed to religious motivations. It isn't necessarily, but it the shoe fits is basically where I'm saying. It may yeah, not be like it may not be that way the whole that you know, turtles all the way down kind of thing. I it's it's rooted in uh, a lot of it is rooted in misogyny and that doesn't only come from religion. No, a lot of religion comes from misogyny. It does, but misogyny <laughs> predates uh, at least the Abrahamic religions. Yeah, uh, you know, once and, and and this is something, the whole abortion thing, um, the resistance to it starts to get particularly um, more. It ramps up uh, around the time of private property laws uh, in Rome. Mm-hmm. Uh, because women, women were not and allowed children to... became a man's property. Yeah, they they were listed as assets. Yes, and that yeah. way there and it was the concept of inheritance that kind of put this into not only just as putting women and children as property into law, but also giving men a feeling of control over women's reproductive systems and well i want to have it also has to do with agriculture i want to mm-hmm. have children who can work the farm or take over this right. or i want i don't want the government to to inherit my property i want somebody of my blood to do it therefore opposition to abortion starts to become more prevalent around that time oh yeah but this is uh this is one of those getting into the weeds of all of civilization. So we're, that may be a little far far afield from Planned Parenthood. Yeah, of course. So, you know, just just a little. This this is a show (laughs) in and of itself. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And not one that a lot of people necessarily want to hear. (laughs) A lot of people need to. Well, yeah, they need to, but that doesn't mean that they that it's a fun conversation for them to have or even necessarily informative because a lot of these things are intuitive, but it's one of those things that until you look at it, you don't, it doesn't click as being a problem. You know, it's, it's the, it's that stain on the rug that you just kind of accepted was there until somebody pointed it out and then you can never not see it. It's that little tear yeah. Under arm of your favorite shirt. Yeah. It's so w- once you point it out, you'll you'll always see it, 
but until it's really there, you can blissfully ignore that there was ever any problem. And that's most of what we have in this country and probably around the world. So it, it's that, you know, un, you know, lift the skirt and see what's going on. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. No, it's and, and that's that's not something that uh, everyone is ready for. And they have to come to it on their own. And then they, they can seek out those sources. We don't necessarily have to be that source. But if you wish us to be that source, send us money through Patreon, and we will then put it out, and we'll do it. We'll have that conversation. Yeah, you can I, death pay me to go on a rant oh, yeah. about misogyny through the ages and where we get a lot of, Amer where mm -hmm. America in particular gets a lot of its super toxic habits and laws and and shit from Rome and a couple other cultures in there too, but mainly Rome. Well, there's also Greece. Mainly Rome. Mm. Greece did some shitty things too. Yeah, but Rome but Rome was the all Roman about Republic. A, but Rome was all about adapting everybody else's stuff. Yeah, but <clears throat> let, let's compare here. The U.S. sees themselves as the inheritor of Western civilization and the observer of Western civilization. Of what they perceive is supposed to be Western civilization. And given that America was founded by religious radicals seeking to have, you know, their cake and eat it too in the most puritanical ways, uh, we, we've really got our panties in a bunch here in this country. About a lot of things. Holes on heads, crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> um, okay. So that was Planned Parenthood. Uh, this is all bad, and it's uh, it's really funny that uh, a couple women would uh, would force this kind of stuff down on on their own gender. I just thought that interesting to to point out there. So, internalized misogyny and indoctrination from a young age. Mm-hmm. Plus, it within the Republican Party, if you want to get a piece of legislation that harms women passed, it's easier with women. Easier with what? It's easier when you have female sponsors yes. of a bill that harms women Yes. for it to pass. So, speaking of bombshells... Hmm. Uh... uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not necessarily a graceful transition, but when you're going to be talking about explosives and Trump, uh, there's no graceful transition there. So uh, the U.S. military this week dropped a large piece of ordinance. In fact, the largest piece of ordinance ever created that is not considered a atomic-grade weapon. Largest piece of U.S. ordinance. That is not atomic. <laughs> that has been yeah, used, my... though. I don't know. It has. Did Russia well, ever as use? Far as, uh... has, as far as it actually has been used, yes. The Russians have not used their father of all bombs, yes. um, yeah. which is actually bigger than the Moab, which everybody calls the mother of all bombs, but is actually actually classified as the GBU forty three B massive ordnance air blast. Yeah. The massive ordnance air blast, which means that it uh, it's designed to explode above the surface and create a shock wave that knocks things down and sets them also on fire. Sucks the air out of the area. That's mm -hmm. why it was really effective being used on caves. Um, but yeah, I mean, to give people an idea of just how big this thing is, I mean, but I can tell you length, I can tell you weight, you know, even oh, I bet you can twenty two thousand pounds, but it's you. T you have the idea of like okay, you see B fifty twos flying and dropping, just like carpet bombing in area. You see bombs being a little of that. You see standard small bombers dropping bombs and everything else. This bomb in particular does not have a bomber. It instead is hauled onto the site by a cargo plane. It is then kicked out the back <laughs> and then guided to target. Yeah, because basically it's dropping. Uh, like a, a like a cargo trailer filled with explosives. <laughs> we are dropping a tank on the problem, yeah. and it's going to blow up before it hits. It has a blast yield yeah. of eleven tons of TNT. 
It's big. It's, it's big. Thirty feet um, long. Now, uh, um, it also costs. How much does it cost? Was uh, it three, about fi- well three hundred and twenty million? No, huh? I I thought it was like three hundred and twenty million dollars. No, um, the total spent on the Moab projects, including ordering twenty of them, was around three hundred and fourteen million. Okay, so that was the um, total project. Okay, that's what yeah. I heard. So, yeah, All I've right. seen that. I've seen it thrown out there. I'm like, yeah. uh, guys, it's like wait a no, second. No, that's the total project cost. It's like no, that's they heavy. cost roughly about fifteen apiece. Fifteen million apiece, which is significantly lower than the sixty cruise missiles we fired. Yes, it is, and it actually was effective this time. Well, this uh, apparently, what was the what was the the take? It was like thirty six. Thirty uh, six actual heard, confirmed heard. ISIS militants. Yeah. Thirty six. Okay. So let's see. Let's bring up a little uh, little calculator here. So it, they're uh, they're how much a piece? Sixteen million a piece. Fifteen. Fifteen million. Assume fifteen million. Okay, fifteen million and thirty six. Well, it it cost us four hundred and sixteen thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars and sixty seven cents. Lots of sixes in there. Lots of sixes. Uh, repeating, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, per person that we killed. Awesome. Yeah. So, if you were ever wondering how much you're worth to the United States, for a terrorist, it's about four hundred and seventeen million. Yeah. I mean, thousand four hundred seventeen thousand. Hey, <laughs> these guys were were underground in tunnels. They didn't want to try and send soldiers into a den to get killed. Yeah. An ISIS labyrinth with a minotaur at the end. Nice. <laughs> sort of. Um, so they decided, okay, we don't want to risk people. Bring out well, the big. Well, you also bring up that number about how many people, were, you know, how much it costs per person for the Moab to be fired. But then yeah. think about the fact that, you know, the cruise missiles we launched was in total about $100 million, of which we killed. Six people. Oh, that that was. I don't think we even killed killed that many. Did, no, did we, we get any confirmed on that one? I don't think we did. Yeah. I don't know if they were actually confirmed, like combatants. They might have stubbed their toes, for all we know. They may have been, you know, children in a blast radius, but. Yeah. Well, that happens, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. This is the the sh- the Shayrat missile strike, right? Yeah. All right, I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking. You guys keep going. I'm just looking to see yeah. if I can confirm. Yeah, the, I mean, there's there's also some different numbers for for that as well. I I on my own page, I was uh, I was musing about uh, the cost analysis breakdown of of how much that okay useless uh, strike was. Seven. <laughs> this is funny. Just the wording on it is funny. Seven or nine Syrian soldiers were killed, including a general. Russian military personnel were also present at the air base at the time it was attacked. According to Syrian state news, Sana, nine civilians were also killed in the attack, including four children. Sana also stated that five of the children were killed in the village of Sherat outside the base, while another four were killed in the village of Al-Hamrat, and that another seven civilians were wounded when a missile hit homes in Al-Mansul, four kilometers, two and a half miles away from the Sherat air base. So huh. roughly for them, it was eight point three repeating million. Per. <laughs> yeah. Now, of the tomahawks that were that were fired, uh, the U.S. military was stating it was like one point four million apiece. Yeah. Um, according to Wikipedia, source of all sources of knowledge, essentially, in twenty fifteen, uh, the U.S. has a stockpile of around thirty five hundred tomahawk variants. Uh, and mm-hmm. that was totaling two point six billion dollars of munitions. So, simple math, you know, thirty five hundred divided by you know two well two point six billion divided by thirty five hundred. That comes to around seven hundred and forty two thousand dollars a piece. So, some are <laughs> obviously more valuable than others, perhaps, or maybe they're charging <laughs> extra storage fees or something or other. But now this is yeah. So it it comes to what they fired there. 
based on the very conservative math here, very conservative, not going with their numbers, it was $44 million to strike an airfield uh, that was then open the next day. <laughs> According to the Russian Defense Ministry, the combat effectiveness of the attack was extremely low. Only 23 missiles hit the base, and it did not know where the other 36 landed. <laughs> no, that strike was entirely A, and as it's come out now, it's entirely A. <laughs> it was a show. Hey, look at us. We're flexing our muscle. Isn't this cool? Look at us doing something. Yay. Because oh, I don't I care Atlanta. what anybody has said and what the PR moles have said, having just seen this man now operate for on the campaign trail and actually in the office, I honestly do not think he gave a damn about any kid that was injured or killed by chemical weapons. No. That was people on his staff and campaign going, we have to do something about this. We have to react somehow. I would I would I expected more from McMaster, though. Because from what we've heard internally, it was mostly from his family members to like, you need to do something. Well, yeah, but there's, you need to do something. And then there's the exact calculus of, I need 59 Tomahawk missiles. From what, you, what we got from reports, you know. he asked for a military solution, um, a, a strike. The Joint Chiefs provided three. He said to focus on two, and then he made the decision for the Tomahawks uh, the day of, that morning. So that actually was a Trump judgment call? Yeah. As was the Moab strike? Yeah. I don't know about that one. I haven't read much. Uh, according to everything that I'm seeing, he, he was the one that pulled the trigger on that one as well. Uh, from what I yeah. heard, it was requested by General in Afghanistan, and he signed off. On Thursday, he dropped what the military calls the mother of all bombs on Islamic Strait targets in Afghanistan. Trump, in measured comments after the strike, said he was proud of the military, and he felt it was a successful operation. The move by Trump sticks to a campaign pledge that he'll focus on defeating the Islamic State, which comes a week after flip-flops on various campaign promises on Thursday in the uh, in space, we noted that some in the conservative media were not happy with his recent shifts on issues ranging from China to NATO. Um, but he's been seeing, seeing people praising him when he's doing military actions, so expect more. Oh, yeah, in interesting. To increase. A little criticism that he's faced from Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> I ask you to think back to the campaign. What did Donald Trump say about ISIS? He said, we're going to take him out. We've had a bunch of pansies and wussies that haven't had a serious moment about it. So here comes the biggest bomb, non-nuclear bomb, dropped, on a, dropped in Afghanistan on an ISIS location. I think he's disappointed that there was no mushroom cloud. Yeah. I th Except there actually... I really think there would be, except, I know, based except, on... Let's, let's, let's combat that, though. Yeah. I, I know the, the common term and ideology is for mushroom clouds to be associated with nuclear weapons. No, I these know. actually it's do have the... mushroom clouds. Yeah, I know. It's, it's... Just for everyone yeah. out there, who's, who, if you ever happen to see a video like on, on TV or everything else, and you see a weapon being dropped and you see a mushroom cloud, realize it, any sufficiently large enough explosive will produce one. And the thermobaric weapons, of which the Moab is that type, mm -hmm. will do that. They are big enough. Yeah. I saw so many people it's freaking out yeah. at one point about large bombs. Going, oh, my God, they're dropping nukes. No, they're not dropping nukes. Those are just really big bombs. Yeah. I, the, the only real difference between the Moab and a, a nuclear strike is just that one's radioactive yeah, well, you're dealing with uh, size of blast area and residual radioactivity. Yeah. That's it. But still, the Moab is still even larger than some small tactical nukes. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, they're, as far as yield goes, it's, it's still on par with some. It's oh, just yeah. the residuals that come afterwards. And so. uh, apparently, doing a little quick research, the father of all bombs, the Russian version of it, is four times as big. 44 tons blast yield. Well, they do have bigger, uh, <laughs> bigger planes that they could drop something but like that. But apparently, it's actually a smaller device. 
Really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. Small, but stout. Yeah. What did they use? I mean, jeez. Okay. Sounds uh, like filling unobtain- is high explosive yeah. and fine aluminum powder with ethylene oxide. Oh. It's a thermite bomb. Essentially, yeah. Small, but stout. Yeah. That's apparently the center. the The actual heat <laughs> in the very center of the thing is twice as high, at least, compared to a Moab. Wow. Fun. See, I don't really like guns. I don't really like explosion. You know, explosive devices. I don't like things that tear things down. But I am a, a techie. I'm fascinated by technology and the things that it does, you know, and destructive power and things like that is fascinating. No matter what, it's always going to be fascinating. Doesn't matter what you say, doesn't matter what it's for. Mm -hmm. It is still fascinating into what it does. Why it is used, that's where I really draw lines. (laughs) So I just wanted to be clear on that. Okay, so um, lots of uh, lots of political show. That. And that is the big thing of that is the fact that is the first time mm-hmm. that weapon has ever been used in combat. And on a it whim. It's only been a test bed since. Yeah, and this was on a whim. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have we have bunker busters. They were in tunnels. Yeah, it was originally built, uh, produced in two thousand three. So we've had them for that long. This is the first time it's ever actually been used. Yeah. They weren't even sure that it was going to have any effect on people in tunnels. (laughs) Because it's an air blast. Right. What do you do when uh, you you, you get in a shelter, right? Where are those shelters? They're underground? Mm -hmm. The safest place to be would be underground, and that's who you're targeting with an air blast ordinance? I I think it's again it's a shock and awe tactic. I think yes they were no. lucky to have gotten those people. Uh, yes and no, because actually this is one of the reasons why thermobaric weapons were developed in the first place. Because what they do, yeah, besides producing a very small, very powerful directed blast, which will shred a building without a problem, mm-hmm. they also, because of their heat, because of their overpressure wave, will actually suck all of the air out of an area in a confined space. So it will literally. Suddenly, everybody in that cave, for a, dis- for a certain distance, there is no oxygen. You are suddenly in vacuum. Surprise. And with all the horrible things that occur, because now you are suddenly in vacuum. But it also depends on for how long, and, mm-hmm. the, and the structures inside the cave. Because it may not be like a Barney Rubble kind of cave here. You know, that if it's a proper hideout... You know, they may have actual structures, and they're kind of expecting to be bombed. That's kind of what we've been doing for the last 10 years. So there's going to be certain protections involved in place. So I don't know. I, I still think it was it's more of a political show than it was an effective use of, of the weapon. Which is why it's like, okay, so if, if you're going to bring out something, this is gaining notoriety because it's the mother of all bombs, not because it's another strike in Afghanistan. It was the, okay, there's no civilians around here. This is a known base. Okay, we can, we can show off and flex our muscle and use this thing and not have to worry about, oh, look, there were kids in the area that we just incinerated. Well, I'm sure the, sci- the weapon scientists are loving it because they got all the instrumentation information off of it. Mm-hmm. And now they can make a better mother of all bombs. But still, it seems, um, well, let history be our guide. We'll figure out how it goes later on. So, and Stephen's adding uh, thermal barrack weapons and a link to the Wikipedia article in the show notes, which are available right now to all of our patrons and will be available in the show notes to anyone that's listening after the fact. Since I'm using these terms, I might as well try to try to get people educated on what that actually means and Absolutely. what it does. Absolutely, yes. By God, are we edutainment? We are edutainment, yes. Let's get back to the tainment part. So, uh, <laughs> China urges the U.S. and North Korea 
to avoid irreversible route to war, we may be on the path toward War Three. Maybe. Maybe. Or Korean War Part Two, Electric Boogaloo. The Korean War Part Two, Electric Boogaloo. Hey, it I... was just a police action. Yep. <laughs> they, they, they've all been police actions since I think there's been, in all of history, the United States has only declared war eight times. Yeah, just let that sink in. Yet we've been in conflict almost constantly since our founding. It's, yeah. So, and also, uh, effectively, given that the president doesn't have to show any results to Congress for, what is it, 60 days? Apparently and he also doesn't have to ask permission for anything. No, he does not. Even though he's supposed to. Well, yeah, but the thing is, they can't say anything about it. They've essentially relinquished all of that control to the executive branch over the over the last 50 years. Because they've never said no. They, they said no to Obama. Yeah, they mm-hmm. said no to Obama. That's because he asked first. <clears throat> That's because he asked first. Yeah. Once you actually go ahead and do it, you know, the, the rule of wrist, as it were, is to ask forgiveness, not permission. It's like, hey, I did this. Uh, I need to. I, th- I think that, uh, you know, the escalation, we're going to have to go to war. But Obama was trying to play nice, nice. Because otherwise, he would have done all this. Because this has been brewing for an awful long time over in Syria and everywhere else. Well, back to North Korea. Yeah, back to North (laughs) Korea. Though, geopolitically, we're kind of on a razor's edge, don't you think? Again, China... Getting there. Repeat that, Daniel. China really doesn't want this. They, they, They like their redhead stepchild, North Korea, to play interference for them on the world stage, especially when it comes to human rights violations. Um, but they're, they don't want this. They don't want North Korea with nuclear capability, and they don't necessarily want all the saber rattling. Also, they don't want the U.S. invading and then being right next door. Right. This does not serve China in any way, shape, or form. It is not good for them, so... That's why they have a bunch of their troops at North Korea's border as we speak right now. So what, is, so what do you think is going to happen here? Because, the, because uh, Kim Jong-un is going to be testing his sixth nuclear device. We're not entirely certain. Uh, things have been put in place. Well, I'm asking you to speculate. What do you think? Well, I think, again, I, I usually have conservative thoughts when it comes to military action. Um, because people don't like dying. People don't like getting hurt. No, personally, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a negative thing. Um, so, you have U.S. ships in the area. You have Japanese ships. Yeah. You have... Chinese troops along North Korea's border. I think North Korea is going to be forced to de-escalate. And if Un has any bit of his father use this opportunity to get the UN at the table to get them food and support. Repeat that again. This is a play to get the UN at the table to negotiate for food and subsidies for their people. You you think they're creating nuclear weapons and doing all of this as a ploy to get international support? No, no, they're a- not creating international aid. Weapons. No, no, they're not creating nuclear weapons to just get 
to the table. No. That the the creation of weapons was Eel's legacy and the well we're we're doing it, but we won't do it. Doing it, but we won't do it. Moon's taking it the next step. I have missiles, I have weapons. Will give me respect, fear me. But now even he and his generals have to go. Well, we've got the attention. Either we're going to light this candle, or we can do what your dad did. And I think they'll take the latter and not the former. Hmm. I don't like backing people into a corner. Because once someone is backed into a corner, they tend to lash out, thinking that they have no other alternative. And if they happen to have a hammer in their hand at the time, they're going to use it to strike at whoever's backing them into the corner. Yeah, cornered animals are the most dangerous and all that. If it was the person that, well... If Ill had had the time to do what he was, what his father did with him, and actually train him in, you know, yeah, this is what we are in some of the ideas when it comes to international global politics, we wouldn't be having this problem. Um, as much as he was sometimes really strange and a disturbing individual, Ill at least you looked at him and go, okay, he's saber rattling. Okay, we can do this thing. He'll do this thing. It was literally a script you just knew. And, okay, this will do this, this will do this. It will lead to, okay, easing of restrictions for this thing. Okay, and everything settles back down. Un, unfortunately, is crazy. Not to be thinking about anybody out there who actually has mental illness. No, this guy is one who, do you disagree with me? I execute you. I don't care that you're my uncle. I don't care who you are. I just kill you because I don't like you. That, um, in, as a dictator, that's not necessarily crazy. That's policy. Except there were other dictators, while being horrible, have still been, I'll use the term, somewhat rational. I think that that is uh, very much in the eye of the beholder. Well, because yeah. if, we, if we look at Assad... Yeah, no, yeah, we all shake our heads. Oh, jeez, yeah. we want to look there. Yeah. the He was running, essentially, a secular government there, where uh, Arab Christians and Arab Muslims could exist in the same vacuum. Mm -hmm. And as soon as start, some of the unrest started, you know, against him and his regime, then you've got jihadists in there killing everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I heard a very interesting first-hand account of what some of them are doing. They're loading up tanks with explosives, full-on tanks, and using those as the suicide bombs. Driving the entire tank into a neighborhood filled with as many people as they can find and blowing themselves to kingdom come. In a whole tank. That takes suicide bombing to a whole other level. That's dedication. Well, you're gonna yes. get to your damn target. Yeah. I mean, you you're driving around in a giant thing that is nothing but it, it's a grenade at that point because it's all shrapnel. So yeah, it, it's it's absolutely horrifying and terrible. But at at a certain point, the Assad regime there had that under control not in a not in a way that us westerners would prefer of course but we have a very particular idea of how things should be so once you start to destabilize the region then you get all of the other factions going on where in some cases you're on the same side as isis is i mean it's 
I, it's hard to even contemplate just intellectually, but once you start to really figure out motivations as to who's on whose side, who's attacking whom, and where they're going, things get really complicated really fast, and you're not really sure where anyone stands. And that's Syria. Yeah. Then we go to the, the little kingdom. Hermit kingdom. The little hermit <laughs> kingdom, yeah. And they, they've done things a very special way that there's no other region in the world, no other country in the world quite like North Korea. Welcome to the Hermit Kingdom. So, when we, when we poke our heads in there, and we have had some interesting reports come out of, of people t- you know, taking tours or making uh, movies for him and things like that, we've seen some very interesting things. Stuff, most recent stuff come out was actually from Vice. Mm-hmm. Um, at least uh, U.S. Um, on Thursday... They were round. All of the the foreign reporters were round up. Um, they had almost all devices taken from them, and were taken to the opening of a new street. So all the reporters had their devices taken from them, and they were taken to the opening of a new street. Yes. Okay. And once they were at the opening of the new street, <laughs> well, what happened, Daniel? Well, we had a bunch of military men with all their medals parading down citizens. Moon was there. There was a platform. Balloons were let loose. It was a big deal for a street. Much pomp, much <laughs> circumstance. Yes, leaving every single reporter insanely confused. I'm sorry, what? Most of the reporters were very, very confused. Okay, confused. Got it. Okay. If you want, I am now at Optimum work, working on the computer now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to get back on that. Oh. <laughs> Definitely. Get, get back in there. Okay. Oh, we're going to have you twice. At least for a second. Okay. Oh, my God, you exist again. All right. Kill one before you start talking on the other. (laughs) All right, camera one, I need you to pull back a little bit. Go a little (laughs) bit to the right. (laughs) Oh, that's better. Oh, we can hear you so much clearer now. Okay. Carry on pontificating about the Hermit Kingdom, please. Uh, <laughs> we, so. When last we left, uh, we had reporters being very confused on an opening of a street. Yes. Now, a lot of people, with, a lot of the reporters within the Hermit Kingdom, knowing that um, this Saturday is uh, uh, Kim Il-sun's, I believe, birthday? Yes, 105th. Yeah, it's his birthday. It's usually when they do something really big. Now, again, this all happened on Thursday. So this, at least to those that are back out of the country so they can actually, you know, analyze and and scrutinize what's coming out of the Hermit Kingdom as opposed to the people who are there who have to find all their P's and Q's and say the right things. Um... This mm-hmm. is a possible, you know, lead into either the nuclear demonstration or a fake out. Hi, we made a new street. There are new buildings here. There is this giant dedication on Thursday. We're going to open it to the rest of the public on Saturday, and it's going to be a big deal. Okay. That's why got the presentation on Thursday, and then they're possibly going to do something as a cop-out. Yeah, because his birthday is tomorrow. Okay. And so the supposed nuclear test, or 
a really big celebration. Well, if the nuclear test is uh, it goes off well, it will be a celebration, I'm sure. Yes, but if the nuclear test goes off, you're going to have China invading as well as possible strikes by the U.S. and Japan. That's where we're at. Yeah. Okay, so that's um, not fun. Yeah, uh, Mama Van is saying that Daniel's volume is now very low, but at least not breaking up, but very low. And I was trying to raise your volume, but there was nothing, okay. nothing to be done about, about that. That's better. That is I'm better. the mic. Yeah, but now we're also getting... Just be getting, careful with breathing. Yeah. It, that, that, Don't breathe, no just talk. Yeah. And no breathing, only talking. No, I'm kidding. That's, that, doesn't, that does not function. I know. No I know, take, I know. only throw. Yeah. Hmm. We'll have to get you a, a, a better something or other. We'll just get you a shotgun mic and just aim it at your face. Uh, again, the, the f- thing that I found best w- that works with my voice and how I work is get me one of those nice desk mics, old-timey radio ones. Work very well. Okay, I can, I can do that. Don't tempt me. <laughs> Don't tempt me. I can do things like that. In fact, I probably got one around here. Yeah, I got some goosenecks around here for dictation and things like that. So... Now that I know, it'll be done. Okay, <clears throat> so so that's the Hermit Kingdom, and yeah. we're going to definitely be looking after uh, what's going to happen next. So I don't let it interrupt your Easter weekend, though, because you know, as if there's anything that we could do about it from here. Uh, um. And, of course, they don't have to, Trump wouldn't have to do anything to get any approval, as we were kind of alluding to earlier. So they can just. Also, on the same lines, act you I'll say I listen, to a, I listen to the NPR, various NPR programs and podcasts. Mm-hmm. And they did one on. This actually shuts back to a show we actually had a little while ago about nuclear fallout, nuclear. Basically, what it takes to for launch a nuclear strike. And. They actually went over everything, talking to people, talking to Secretary of Defenses, talking to Secretary of States, and basically said essentially that Nixon was right, that a president with no – there is no requirement whatsoever that they talk to anyone else. There is no requirement whatsoever that anybody else signs off on it. In 20 minutes, they can go to a room, make a phone call, and then people are dead. There is no requirement whatsoever for them to pull the trigger. So let that mm-hmm. just percolate in your mind. I'm sorry for ruining some of, some of your Easter's, but <laughs> well, th- this is the world we live in. I mean, there's there's no sense in sugarcoating it. That's just how it is. And if you're intellectually honest with yourself, any examination you be terrified. Well, no, 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 no. It's it's not that. It's any examination of the situation of what that job entails of what politically that means it makes sense of course that's the way it has to be it's a judgment call yeah we elect somebody that we're supposed to trust to Mm -hmm. make the right call in those times but also i like like what they said the fact of nowadays because the idea of the way it was that way before was because we only really had land-based ICBMs. That was the only real strike capability we had. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you had, from the moment of launch, you had seven minutes to make a decision, probably less, because the first things that are going to be hit are probably going to be your ICBM bases, and they have to get their missiles up, get their birds running hot, and fire them off, which takes time. And those are going to be the first things to get targeted. So you had to have somebody who could without consultation, just go, yes, do it. Yeah. Nowadays, because we have the nuclear triad, for anyone out there who, who's wondering, because our wonderful dear leader didn't know what the nuclear triad was, that is a combination of land-launched, air-launched, as in from planes, and sea-launched, a.k.a. missile submarines, mm-hmm. nuclear weapons. A.k.a. there's no way you can take out all three. You might get one, but you're not going to get all, so we still have retaliatory capability. Yes. But because we have that now... We might 
want to look at revising the law where, no, the president might need to talk to somebody in order to get full authorization to launch because, okay, it won't matter if they launch first. We're still going to have the capability to strike back no matter what. Yeah, but, you know, he is the commander of the armed forces. Mm-hmm. And really... This is who our people elected. But, but I think that's the thing. Just like how it was the stain on the rug that you could ignore until it was pointed out. We know, if, if we examine it, if we look at the way things are, we know that this is the way it has to be. That that is the job of the president. That yeah. that, is, that is the football that he has next to him. That is why it is there. That is the reality. We ignore that most of the time. And we let identity politics rule the day. And the, the reason why we have to elect people that we inherently trust is because of this. Because they have to make trustworthy decisions at all times. They have to Actually, be, yeah. they, they have that, to have unimpeachable motivations. I, I, I have something that I think should be asked of every president from here on out. Okay. Well, actually, voter. Okay, yeah. Would you trust this person to watch your child? Ooh. Good one. I like that. Would you trust this person to watch your child? No. And would you trust them with the nuclear launch codes? That's, uh... Yeah. It's a good transition because it puts an immediate moral quandary mm -hmm. for the big thing that sometimes is just too big for people to think or wrap their heads around. It really personalizes them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have to make it a threat. This is the thing that we're learning about Republican politics. Yeah, it's all fear. Yeah, and it needs to be personal fear. It does have to be a personal fear. Yeah, because otherwise, an existential threat can be ignored. That's why you don't ask, "Would you trust him with nuclear codes?" Because that's an existential threat in right. people's minds. Because people don't understand what that really means. Yeah. So, yeah. But would you trust this person to watch your child? I wouldn't trust Donald Trump to watch my kid. The one who has, you know, gone, unfortunately, on the record with pussy grabbing. Also, and his saying that, that he, he would date to, his he would date his daughter. Yeah, and it's and like the, well, the no. restaurant that he goes to has multiple health violations. My kid's going to be eating with him. I mean, Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. <laughs> No, I would not trust this man with my child. No. No. I wouldn't trust the man with a spork and a plugged-in toaster. I, there's self-preservation there, Steve, even, even with him. You know, for, for some people, also pets. Yeah, would you, would would you, you trust, trust him with your dog? Your pet? Yeah. Would you trust him to sit your dog and make sure that nothing happened? To make sure that nothing happened, that your house didn't, you know, have have little Fido or or uh, or Spot or whatever, uh, make a giant mess all over the place, tear up the living room, you know, knock over the vase or anything like that. To make sure your dog was fed, even. Uh huh. All of that, yeah. Do and do it himself, not outsource it to somebody else, to shirk the responsibility. Would you trust him and him alone, mm -hmm. your kid, or your beloved pet? Yeah. Do you trust him to, to take care of them 24, 48 hours? Do you trust them? I, w I wouldn't even trust him just going out to see a movie or something. Again. Yeah. It, it, it's something that should be asked when we're talking about a president. Right. Unfortunately, that would be very easily deflected by saying, uh, but he's better than the other person 
whoever the other person is. I don't. I, I'm sorry. I'll trust my kid with Bernie. I'll, yeah. Oh yeah. I'll I'll trust my kid with with angry grandma, Hillary Clinton. Um. Yeah. I would not trust my kid with Donald Trump. And the funny thing is, there's this. I think we we said this before. When it comes to human psychology, a very interesting thing that's been put out is the idea of you do not know actual love and what it means until you've owned a pet. And especially, like you know, yeah, we'll say the standard ones like a dog or a cat or such. But from everything we've been able to see and everything we've heard, he's never had one. Yeah, he doesn't have any pets. He's like the first first president that hasn't had an animal in the White House. Yeah. In a really but, long time. In a very long time. But we time. haven't really seen that there's been any evidence he's ever had one. Yeah, I don't I don't want to carry on with any uh possible character assassinations that I'm about to utter. So I think with this point <laughs> We Just probably, think about that. Yeah, it's like, mm, there's there's places I could take this, but I'm just going to take it out. So, <laughs> if you've enjoyed what we're doing here and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways that you can do that. You can donate to the show through www.patreon.com slash radio and get early access to full show content, get access to the show notes, and get our ear. You know, any anything that you say is going to go to us immediately. Uh, you can make the algorithm work for us by reviewing us on iTunes to boost our ranking and use your words. Tell somebody about us. That would always, always help a lot. Hang on, then music's a little loud. Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? I can't remember. Is that it? No, that's not it. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, new board. <laughs> uh, and of course, engage with us directly. Send us a message on the social medias or the electronic mails at a really radio podcast at gmail.com or if they're more talkative sort, 470-222-6759. It's always ready to take your call or your text. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time with us. This has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pamgea, created by Kevin McLeod of Incomtech. Dot com. And we'll see you real soon.